think I've always enjoyed a challenge in climbing. I'm basically more than happy to put in the work to try and figure out any way to do something that I'm psyched on. And as long as the psych's there, I think I'll always be happy to keep trying at something. When you kind of have this problem of, oh right, okay, I'm not good enough at the moment, but how can I make myself good enough? And sort of trying to figure that out became part of the enjoyment for me. I certainly don't think there's anybody else that I know that is as dedicated and motivated as Johnny, especially not in that single-minded way. I think that's another level. Bibbins <laughs> Cave is a limestone cave in the Forest of Dean, which is towards the southwest of the UK. When I first went to the cave, it was way beyond my level to do anything really in the middle of the roof. And I remember being there and chatting with my friend and being like, it would be amazing if it was possible if anyone could climb from the back of the cave to the lip, because it just really wasn't seen as something that would be easily done. The original climb in the roof was Godzilla, which started on a couple of undercuts and was a four move boulder problem to finish on this pinch in the middle of the roof. It wasn't really felt that you could go any further than that, so that kind of became where the line stopped. In 2016, I managed to repeat Godzilla. Yes! <laughs> awesome! The following year in 2017, I added in Wadzilla. After that, James Square managed to climb from the Godzilla starting point all the way to the lip of the cave. And it came a much better line, basically, and a more obvious finishing point. Yes! Oh my god! The world is yours basically starts from the back of the cave on the right at the Wadzilla start, climbs the full length of the roof to reach the lip. And I've spent how many years it is now, <laughs> five to six years, trying to get from the back of the cave to the lip and climb the world is yours. Describe Johnny. Is obsessive the right word? I mean, there's um, certainly determined. I think the main difference between projecting and quicker ticks is you have to enjoy the process to the point that it doesn't necessarily become about the end goal. The bits of progress, the progression that you see are so tiny, it, you know, it might be putting your foot differently on a hold or you know, the way that you hold a crimp. It's taking joy out of those tiny little beta changes. It's about the journey. It's not necessarily about ticking off at the end of the day. Obviously, that's that's what we all aim to do for somebody like myself or Johnny. It's, it's the process that we enjoy. The climb kind of breaks down quite nicely into three sections. The first is a sort of eight move V9 that's kind of a lot on like undercuts and physical on the biceps and your fingers.
And this then leads you into the start of the crux for the Godzilla section. It starts off with this like really big move to this like pinch that's a bit of like a break in the rock. So there's sort of like this slot that you have to get your fingers into before then having this kind of tensiony climbing where you roll to this bad skinny pinch and then adjusting your feet so you can flip these and take them as a layback. The final move is moving into this weird sort of block hold that's a bit like a pocket in some ways. You have to be pretty accurate to get into it. That four move middle sections in and around the 8B range. And then this then leads you into the final section, which is sort of like another 70, 70 plus kind of climbing that has the red point crux of this big jump out to this in-cut edge, which is like the final hold that you go to with your left hand. Basically, from the second you pull on, you're emptying the tank and trying to get through it as quickly as possible, because there's not really any points that I could rest and recover. It's all about just trying to go as quickly as possible without making mistakes. There are some challenges with trying to climb in Biblins. The main one is the fact that the crag gets bat banned. Bats hibernate in the winter there, so you can basically only climb there from the beginning of May until the end of September, which obviously coincides with the warmest months of the year, which often makes it a bit challenging. I'd often find that I'd be able to get one session a week, maybe two, throughout most of the season. This was partly because of work restraints, but also skin. And it was also just like a lot of driving if I was going a bit more frequently than that. Up until the 2021 season, I was living in Bristol, so the drive wasn't too bad. However, then I moved to Sheffield for work in the beginning of 2022. My girlfriend's definitely been very patient with me. We've often not gone on trips or I basically set aside the summer seasons for climbing at Biblins. I just kind of got used to it. It became such a norm that May to September, that's what happens. It's Biblin season, so that's what gear we're in. <laughs> he's going to be much happier to be able to focus on it than me sort of being like, oh no, I want you here all the time. I don't think you're going to do that. Like that's not going to go well for either of us. It's much better to just be like, go for it, go send and do whatever I can to help the send get <laughs> happen sooner than stop it or stand in the way of it altogether. During those months, I basically set aside that that was what I was focusing for. Everything else would be looking to have me feeling good for that time of year. I'm not sure of like the exact number, but I think I've had between 110 and 115 sessions on the climb. And I reckon over that time, I definitely had over 200 burns from the start. Not really sure how many times I've pulled onto that bit of rock total, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's in the thousands, basically. <laughs> never had any doubt in my mind that eventually Johnny is going to do this thing. We just didn't know when. Every single year that he's tried it, he's come agonisingly close. hardest times came around the end of the 2019 season. Basically 2019 I'd set aside that I knew I was going to be spending a lot of the summer trying it and I basically didn't try anything else for like the five months that the season was open. I remember thinking to myself as long as I'm doing everything that I feel like I can to do it I can live with that whereas I didn't want to feel like I wasn't giving it all I could. But it was still pretty hard to not get too hung up on the on the result in that 2019 year. It was the first time I'd put sort of five months into something and or like any length of time really and come away empty handed. Going into the 2020 year, initially I wasn't going to be spending as much time there. Um, obviously, pandemic happened and the world went a bit crazy. Did some home training in my parents' uh, cellar, which which yeah was trying to make the best of a bad situation basically. It was also then pretty tough mentally because that was the first kind of year of a kind of consistent backwards progress almost. 
So there was times in that 2020 year that I was kind of ready to be done with it. I think what's incredible is Johnny's attitude throughout. He's had moments where suddenly it's looked really close and then something's shifted and the next few sessions, you know, it's gone backwards. I don't think I've ever seen any frustration. You know, it's very measured, he just takes everything in his stride, looks at what he can do to change something up or just go through the processes to trying to make sure he's as strong and as fit as he possibly can be and then getting back on and, and persevering, it, it really is quite remarkable. Each off-season, because I'd obviously have sort of seven months that I wasn't able to try the climb, I'd usually dedicate that time to working on something to try and improve it. And obviously this would end up being like a little bit of trial and error, both in terms of what I was trying to improve and if that would be effective, and then also protocols within those things. So I messed around with trying to improve my endurance, trying to improve flexibility, fluctuations with body weight, gaining more like body strength, gaining more finger strength. Ultimately, being able to find what were the best kind of balance for all those things was and how much time I'd spent into them really, I think, helped this year in that I felt like I had more margin for error when I was going for goes from the start and I didn't need everything to be perfect. How many hours do you think you've spent sat here? A lot. It's, it's, it's like over 500, isn't it? Because it's... I, yeah, I reckon the average session is like... been about five hours. And then... I'd probably been here like... another 20 or 30 sessions on top of what I've done. <laughs> of like, trying to climb the roof. So yeah. Probably yeah, could be like... 700 hours. <laughs> come on, come on, Johnny. Come on, Johnny. Nice, smooth. Oh. First go of the day, I basically matched my high point and it was probably like my best go that I'd had to date, but I wasn't like getting over excited and like, oh yeah, I'm definitely definitely going to do it like now. I, I like I'd been in that kind of position or similar positions before. All that was running through my head was the fact that I knew that James had dropped the finish when he did the, uh, the first ascent and Sam Blackwell, when he did, uh, the first ascent of the other entrance, um, also dropped the finish. I knew it wasn't ever going to be over until it's, it's over. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. Come on. Come on, Johnny. Come on. Come on. Come on, Johnny. Come on, Johnny. Come on, Johnny. Come on. Thanks.
Earlier that afternoon, I'd been like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if today was the day? Like, and I get a text later saying I've done it. And then he did, so that was very odd. <laughs> and I had not told him that. It's a combination of all that dedication, the hard work, and to see something like that pay off, because it was never a guaranteed thing. Um, you can invest all of that time and, and it not, or you might fall out of love with the climb. You, you just don't know. Really exciting that it has paid off. It was, it was very surreal and if I didn't have people there like cheering me on, I definitely would have been like checking the footage that it like actually happened. <laughs> it sounds weird to say that like I wouldn't have wanted to do it quicker, but I think I was quite happy that it kind of like took as long as it did. For a lot of people, climbing is about having lots of experiences and trying lots of climbs, doing lots of climbs. But for me, I definitely enjoy the aspect of trying to push my limit. And you're not going to do that if you're not putting in like loads and loads of sessions over loads and loads of years and actually trying to find what you can and can't do. I kind of felt for a lot of the years uh, that I was trying that, that this would be like that limit. Um, but there's definitely a little bit of question that's brought into my mind on the send go because I didn't climb it perfect. <laughs> Obviously Biblins is a area that has a few restrictions. If you are planning on going, please make sure to check UKC or BMC RADS. There's information there about when you can climb, when you can't climb, and how you may conduct yourself when you go climbing there.